What's up you guys, Alex Parkinson here, and today we are going to be diving into mysteries of the anointing. Have you ever been curious what the anointing is? Have you ever asked yourself, do I have the anointing? Do all Christians have the anointing? Or is this something that's exclusive for um, super anointed men and women of God? Uh, this is something we're going to dive into today, and I'm excited to do that with you. If you're new to my channel, I'm going to ask you to do what everyone else on YouTube asks, and that's that you like this video because that helps boost the video to get in front of more people to share the good news. Uh, and then, of course, if you get to the end of this video and you say, wow, this was awesome, this blessed me, you can comment below and let me know and also consider joining our community by subscribing. Uh, between the teaching videos, the testimony videos, and the uh, missions videos, we believe that you'll be blessed and stirred up to go change the world with the gospel yourself. So uh, one more thing before we get into this lesson today. I'm going to move very quickly, but I have something uh, fairly new that I want to show you. Actually, it's a restock of a product that we've uh, got now, and uh, I wanted to show you guys this. The link to this is in the description, but guys, check this out. The shirt that I'm wearing right here is our uh, brand new Habakkuk 3-4 shirts, which Habakkuk 3-4 says that in God's hand is the hiding place of his power. So uh, on the front and on the back here, we've got these shirts with, uh, with a hand and a bolt, and it says the Zion Company, the name of our ministry, and then underneath it says the hiding place of his power. So these are available on our websites, we have both Heather Black and we have White. Uh, the Heather Black sells the most, so we're learning that that's a favorite. We sold out of those and had to get restocked, so we just got a whole shipment of these in, and uh, we're stoked on how they turn out. They're nice, and they've made it all around the world. We've get, gotten uh, photos even from France. Someone in France snapped a photo with the Eiffel Tower wearing this Habakkuk 3-4 uh, shirt. So, It'll bless you guys, and uh, those are available down below as well as our books. You can grab uh, a copy of both of my books. Uh, those are available on the website as well as on Amazon. So again, if you're blessed by the video or anything else that we release, uh, be sure to sew into your walk with the Lord to wear shirts and, and clothing that you know give off a message of walking in the power of God because my friends, we need a gospel that has power. And I believe that's the gospel that we are called to preach. The kingdom of God, according to 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, is not in word only, but in power. So anyway, enough about that, guys. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the anointing. Uh, the title of this video is called Mysteries of the Anointing. And now I have to say something before I get in. And, I'm, and this is just because I want to give credit where credit is due. Part of why... I wanted to make this video is because I got stirred uh, recently reading a book actually by uh, Benny Hinn called Mysteries of the Anointing. And so I want to give credit. Uh, I'm not the type of person to um, read a book and then just preach and teach everything that, you know, uh, I read in the book uh, because I think that could be copying a lot of times. Uh, but however, um, I'm not new to the concept of anointing, um, being in the ministry for a few years now and walking with the Lord, I understand the anointing to a degree, but I still like to read books uh, that go over these topics. And I found that this book in particular so far is really simple and uh, gives a lot of clear distinctions that I felt uh, is so helpful for the body of Christ. And so whatever you may think of Benny, you know, understand that he is probably one of the best that you could um, learn from on the topic of the anointing. And I felt like he did a great job um, setting up, you know, different distinctions on, you know, the uh, different types of anointing because the anointing is vast. There are different streams of the anointing. And oftentimes I think Christians get confused when it comes to um, how the anointing functions, works. Uh, the question is, you know, am I anointed? Do I have the anointing? And so uh, I feel like Benny did a great job because he separates the anointing in three different uh, categories, if you will. Uh, number one, there is the abiding anointing, and we're going to get into this. Uh, number two, there's the empowering anointing. And then number three, there is dominion anointing. 
So we're going to cover the first two. Uh, dominion anointing is more pertaining to changing nations and impacting uh, the world on a national level. And so, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into that because that's a very rare anointing and not something that, you know, quite frankly, every person in the body of Christ will enter into. But uh, we're going to look at the first two. And again, this isn't to copy Benny, but honestly, this is stuff I understood already. But I felt like that reading this book, it stirred me to uh, put into my own words and to bring language uh, out of my own heart and out of the overflow of my own experiences in ministry and in life to share with you some basic principles when it comes to the anointing. So I want to look at, first and foremost, the abiding anointing. This is so important for Christians to grab a hold of because I'm going to let you know right away the abiding anointing is that anointing that is given to you inside of you the moment you become born again, the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, the moment that you surrender to Jesus and you become a new creation in Christ. Christ makes his home on the inside of you. And the word Christ is anointed one. Jesus Christ lives in you. The spirit of God regenerates your spirit. And he lives in you. The anointing lives and abides in you. So I want to open up by reading from 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. This is where we get our biblical reference for this abiding anointing. And again, this is something that every believer in Jesus Christ has. But in 1 John 2, uh, verse 27, it says, As for you, the anointing which you received from him, speaking of Christ, the anointing which you received from him abides in you. Now, it's important to recognize that. It abides in you, inside of you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in him. Hallelujah. First John 2, verse 27. So this is so good and honestly very important that every believer comes to the realization and the revelation of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. There are several ways in, w in which we could call this. Um, I think honestly, many of you as Christians know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you the moment you become born again, but you didn't know that that was an anointing. You didn't know that that was um, Christ himself, the anointed one abiding and living on the inside of you, the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, it says that this anointing which you received will teach you all things, and therefore you don't need a teacher. Now, this is something um, I think people get confused on because this isn't uh, saying that you don't need to have a teacher to teach you things in the body of Christ. This is actually more so speaking of the fact that because you have this anointing abiding in you, the Spirit of God um, you do not need a teacher in the sense that um, John here is addressing teachers of the day who are deceiving believers to um, basically believe in other persons, in other philosophies other than Christ. And the intention there was to deceive people from Christ. And so you have the Spirit of God in you. You don't need another person. You just need Jesus Christ. And so it's not saying never listen to a teacher in the body you know, because that's a part of the fivefold office giftings, but it's actually just saying like you, you, you know, uh, the truth of who Jesus is because of the spirit of Jesus Christ inside of you. So now this anointing teaches you all things. This reminds me of John chapter 16, when Jesus said that the spirit of God, who is the spirit of truth will lead us and guide us into all truth. So this is an amazing re reality. The Spirit of God is in us, and when we abide and have fellowship with God by the Holy Spirit, we begin to grow deeper in our walk with the Lord. I believe that because of this anointing that abides in us, as it says in uh, 1 John 2, 20, it says, you've received an anointing from the Holy One, therefore you know all things. Again, it's not that you're a know-it-all, but the Spirit of God who is omniscient lives in you. He knows all things. In um, 1 Corinthians 2, 
it says that the Spirit of God searches the depths of God, the bottomless things of God. The Spirit of God who knows the mind of God lives in you and can impart to you understanding and revelation so that you can begin to know God and walk with Jesus Christ in a real and intimate way. So this anointing is for your personal life and it lives on the inside of you. Notice that it doesn't say it's upon you. That's what we're going to get into here in a little bit. But it is within you. It's that mystery which was hidden from all of the ages, according to Colossians 1, but now lives uh, in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So uh, this anointing is for your personal life. It's not for anyone else. It's for you. It's this anointing that dwells in you and benefits you. It's God working within you, molding you, transforming you. Uh, one way you could call this uh, abiding anointing is a character anointing because the Spirit of God is actually forming Christ-like character on the inside of you. So this anointing is not for others. It's not for doing anything. It's for living. It's for uh, uh, the Spirit of God to transform you, change you, mold you, shape you, teach you. It is all about fellowship with God. It's all about walking with God. So that is the abiding anointing. So right away, we are answering a question here. Many have asked, is every Christian anointed? Is every Christian, uh, every, does every born again believer have the anointing? And here's how I would say it. Every born again Christian has the anointing, but not every believer is anointed. Okay, now I'm going to explain this. Every Christian is, has the anointing, but not every believer has been anointed by God. And this is because there's a distinction between the abiding anointing that is given to you the moment you believe and the empowering anointing for ministry that comes upon an individual's life. So let's talk about that. Acts 1 verse 8 says, you shall receive power. This is Christ speaking. You shall receive power, dunamis, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and I will make you my witnesses. In uh, Acts 10 verse 38, it says that Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power and went about doing good, freeing those oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Amen. And then, of course, to give one more reference, because I have to quote this one, Isaiah 61 opens with, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord has come upon me. Notice that language, upon me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord has come upon me, and he has anointed me to preach good news. So there is a distinction between this inward abiding anointing, which can grow, which can increase, and increases your walk with the Lord, your fellowship with God. But there is a distinction between that and the coming upon of the Holy Spirit, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit for ministry, for service toward God. The abiding anointing is for living. The empowerment anointing is for doing. So when you are anointed, when the Spirit of God has come upon you in uh, the, the picture of being anointed is to, is to be painted. It's to be smeared. It's like smearing the oil. And it's like God. God's charisma comes upon you. God's uh, personality comes upon you. It, it changes you. This is why in 1 Samuel chapter 10, it says that when the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul, he was like another man and he prophesied. So the anointing supercharges you. It empowers you. And according to Isaiah 61, it, uh, it came upon Christ and anointed him to preach good news, to open the eyes of the blind, to set captives free, to proclaim the good and acceptable year of the Lord. That is what the empowerment anointing does. But this anointing isn't given to every believer. This is only given to those who have been found faithful and who have paid the price and by that, I mean those who have uh, sown their time to seek the Lord and to surrender their lives to the Lord for service. See, the anointing has a purpose. 
the empowerment anointing has an assignment, and that is to minister to others. But to those who do not have a desire to do that, they will not walk in that empowering type of anointing. So notice when we read Acts 10 verse 38, it says that um, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost of power and went about doing good. And then Isaiah 61, the anointing was for preaching good news. So there's this revelation that the Lord gave me a while back. He showed me the connection there and the emphasis on the word good. Um, the purpose, according to Acts 10.38, was to do good works. And then the purpose in Isaiah 61 was to preach good news. There's a level of intentionality and purpose with the anointing to preach good and to do good. To do good works. And what were those good works? Freeing those oppressed by the devil. Amen. So when the empowerment anointing comes upon you, like Acts 1.8, you, you receive power to become a witness uh, the power of God flows with your life to heal the sick, to do the works of Christ. And oftentimes when a, an anointing like that is present, it's, it, it's something that brings about a grace for greater works. You begin to see yourself moving in notable signs, wonders, miracles, um, the empowerment to preach uh, the gospel, you know, uh, winning people to Christ. Uh, sometimes uh, as an evangelist, I will feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit to preach good news. Oftentimes in crusade settings, uh, I will feel the coming upon of the Holy Spirit to empower me to preach in a way that wins souls for the Lord. And it's a grace. It's, 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 the, it's the power of God. But this is uh, given to those who are found faithful, those who separate themselves to pray in secret. If you look at Acts uh, chapter 1, it says that they continued in prayer. They continued in prayer in the upper room. And then, of course, in Acts 2, we see the manifestation, the baptism, the uh, birthing of the church because of the day of Pentecost, the coming upon of the Spirit of God, where tongues of fire was manifest. Amen. And, and many were added to the church that day. So the distinction between the abiding anointing and the empowering anointing is simply this. The abiding anointing is in you, and it is there for your purpose, for your sake. It is there to grow you in character. It is there to grow you in revelation. It is there to deepen and strengthen your walk with God. This is why Paul oftentimes would speak of being strengthened by Christ in the inner man. Because there's this inward um, anointing that can be strengthened. That can grow. Your relationship with God can grow deep where you know him deeply. And whenever there isn't an, an empowerment of the anointing, what you're left with is the level of cultivated relationship with God by way of the abiding anointing. So it's important to recognize that your walk with the Lord is first and foremost your intimacy with him. And oftentimes the intimacy with him will cause an oil to overflow upon your life where you're empowered you're so um, uh, saturated with the oil of the Lord. You're like that wise virgin, uh, the five wise virgins in Matthew 25 who bought the oil. There are five foolish virgins who didn't buy the oil. And whenever the king came knocking on the door, they weren't ready. Their lampstands weren't burning. And they were actually beginning to beg the wise virgins, can we have some of your oil? And this is a picture of the end days church, the, the last day's church, I should say, um, there will be those who refuse to have intimacy, to buy the oil for burning for their lampstands. But then there are those who set themselves apart and they enter into that pursuit of seeking. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, that God is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. The reward oftentimes when we seek God, 
is a greater manifestation of his presence, a greater anointing where the closeness of the Holy Spirit so marks and changes our life. And whenever your heart is purposed to do good, as Christ went about doing good, you will attract the empowerment anointing. You will attract, attract everything necessary that it takes to make an impact in the world. So I pray that this, on a very basic level, helped you to understand the anointing a little bit more. Again, I said this in the beginning, the anointing is very vast and the anointing is something we could talk a lot about and maybe I'll make more videos. If you enjoyed this, definitely let me know if you'd like me to cover this more extensively. Uh, I can do my best to begin to, you know, uh, teach a little bit more and expound a little bit more on specific uh, topics pertaining to the anointing because this is just an introductory video. But um, from my experience, you guys, as a preacher, and maybe you're watching and you're a preacher, you're a minister, we need the anointing of his spirit. And by that, I mean, we need the empowerment anointing. And we also need the abiding anointing because our character matters, who we are matters. When the anointing, uh, the empowerment anointing lifts, what you have is your personal anointing, your personal character with God, your personal strength that you have because of your relationship with him. And so, guys, we need both. And uh, we, need, we need to show the world what it looks like to be fully surrendered to Jesus, to be fully clothed with power. This generation needs a touch from heaven, a fresh demonstration of our great God. And uh, I believe that there are many watching right now who are being stirred and want to just answer the call of God. And you just want to uh, maybe even after this video, pray and seek the Lord until his spirit comes upon you. You know, in Luke 24, Jesus said, tarry and wait in Jerusalem until you're clothed with power from on high. Man, I want to pray for you right now because I feel the empowerment of the Lord even now. It's, it's amazing as how we talk about it, as we begin to just preach and teach and talk about it. You can feel the Spirit of God just begin to increase and, uh, and bring His presence in an increased manner. So I just want to pray even right now. You're watching this. Just put your hand on your heart in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for that transferable anointing of your Spirit. Let it come upon you now in Jesus' name. Be clothed, be saturated, be equipped, be touched right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would cause there to be great ministries birthed in this hour. Lord, that the church and the body of Christ in this hour would walk so strong in the power of your presence. I just thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit inside of us, teaching us, leading us into all truth, bringing forth revelation. Lord, in the name of Jesus, for any person right now who feels confused in their mind and stuck in their walk with you, I pray now that the anointing would break the yoke Lord, that wisdom and revelation would be theirs today in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you for every listener. May they be blessed today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. My friends, I pray that this encouraged you. I'm definitely going to get on more and start teaching uh, here and there. Uh, I'm so excited just to dive more into this topic. Let me know what you thought about it. And uh, don't uh, forget to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to be a part of our community and uh, learn a little bit more about what we're doing. So God bless you guys. I'll talk with you guys soon.